I just got back from Halloween Horror Nights 32, and here are all my thoughts on everything this year has to offer. Before we get started, please go ahead and like and subscribe. I am a big Universal fan, and I'm hoping to give you a lot more Universal content coming soon. Okay, without much further ado, let's get into it, because I have so much to say about this year. This year is packed, and I don't just mean the crowds. Universal's Halloween Horror Nights is taking place right now at Universal Orlando and Universal Studios Hollywood. This video is exclusively about Orlando. We're going to discuss the houses, the scare zones, the tribute store, everything. Let's get started with my overall thoughts on this year. I think this year, especially the fact that we have an icon back. So this year, every scare zone and even some houses are directly related to Dr. Oddfellow. This creates a overall story for this entire year, and it's really very interesting. I also think this year has some really strong houses. There is really not that much separating house number one from house number five, and it's a really strong year for houses. There are also some really great scare zones and some really nice additions this year that I think are well appreciated for somebody who's been going to Horror Nights for a long time. That being said, though, there are some negatives. So I want to kind of get into those really quickly, some overall negatives. This year is crowded. And that's to be expected when you have some big IPs like Stranger Things and Last of Us at this event. But this year is really hard to get everything done in one night. Last year, I came during the second week of the event, which is typically the dead week of the event. It's supposed to be a lot slower during the second week as opposed to any other week. And last year I was able to do every single house, every single night, no problem, without Express. This year, even if you had Express, I think you may be struggling to do every single house this year in one night. It is ridiculously crowded and there are just people everywhere. I'm not sure if Universal oversold passes or if they sold too much Express. I don't know what happened, but something this year is different than last year. There is just too many people, and it can make getting through everything a little bit difficult. In addition to there being too many people, there are also not enough food booths. When you have a bunch of people in the park, and they're all hungry, and you have limited food options, that means that places that serve food are going to have very long lines. They also have a place like Mel's Drive-In, or Mel's Die-In for Halloween Horror Nights, that is closed. It is closed for refurbishment. So the fact that there's another option that is gone this year, an air-conditioned option, gone to find food with Mel's closed, that's just, it's really hard. It's really hard to find something to eat. But that's really it for my overall thoughts, both positive and negatives. Obviously, more positive and negatives are to come. But let's get started and in jumping into some finer details. The first thing I want to talk about is the tribute store this year. It is my favorite tribute store that they have ever done. So this year you are entering a comic book shop located in New York and you literally go inside of the comic book. There are so many Easter eggs in the window that's referring to past Halloween Horror Nights, even some like Earl the Squirrel, which if you know me, you know I love him. He's basically their like Christmas icon at this point. One cool little detail about the tribute store is that the panels are all on the walls for you to read but the threats in every story are represented in 3D sculptures. It's definitely worth taking your time to read all of these panels. It's great. My favorite room is going to be the False Idols Part 1 room, which is a Boris Schuster comic. If you don't know who Boris is, he's a long-standing character. In the event, he investigates all of the creepy stuff that's happening in the park during Halloween Horror Nights. He has a black and white comic and the room is completely black and white. It even has some cool effects like rain and some rain effects on the floor. There's some projections in this room. Just every single thing to look at. There's so much to look at and it is beautifully done. This room itself is just worth visiting the tribute store this year. The cool thing is too, this year they're actually selling the comic book. So this is the exact same story in all four rooms of this year's tribute store, and you get to buy it and take it home and read it. It's really cool that they did this. Uh, this is one of my favorite things that I purchased this year at the tribute store, because now I get to basically take a piece of the tribute store home with me. There are also some really cool advertisements in here that are fake advertisements that will give any Universal fan a great time. I did see one complaint online that people were complaining that the tribute store wasn't themed to like Stranger Things or Last of Us. And I'm like, well, 
you have a whole house dedicated to that. Let there be something that's new and original and frankly, a lot more interesting. Once again, Tribute Store is a must, even if you are not going to be buying anything, which you probably will. There's so much merchandise this year. I never spent so much money at the park before ever, but that's another video. The Tribute Store is a must do. It is fantastic. You have to go through the Tribute Store this year. Next up on our list is going to be the Scare Zones this year. So I'm going to give you my official ranking of this year's Scare Zones. So my least favorite Scare Zone this year is going to be Shipyard 32 Horrors Unhinged. The Scare Zone is supposed to be Dr. Oddfellow is kind of shipping all of these monsters around and something goes wrong and all of the monsters come out of their boxes and their crates. The issue with this scare zone is that there is not that much going on. Um, there aren't that many scares in this scare zone. I went through it a few times and it kind of felt like nothing was happening. There are scare actors in this zone and I think that they're doing the best job that they possibly can. There just isn't enough to do. Uh, visually, it's kind of boring. There is just not much happening. I don't blame them because this scare zone in the past has always been a bottleneck. It has always been my least favorite scare zone. Some years I actually had to go around it like on the sidewalk just to get out because it was just so packed with people and with these big kind of sets. So I understand why they didn't want to do any kind of intricate sets, but it just feels kind of barren in there. It's not that great. Some of the costumes are really interesting and there are references to past Halloween Horror Nights events. But again, to me, this was a miss. Next up is going to be Dr. Oddfellow's Collection of Horror. Now, this scare zone is always a little bit difficult because it is the opening scare zone. It's what you walk into. In the past, it was always kind of a hodgepodge of what you would see. And this year is no different. You will see a scare actor representing each one of the different scare zones. It's usually not all that scary. It kind of is usually just a photo op kind of situation. It is not overly designed super nicely. It's just, again, the opening credits, basically. The only thing that really gave this a bump to number four was the Dr. Oddfellow kind of miniature show that he does. Dr. Oddfellow is live mic. He will interact with you. I'll include some footage of that show right now. Let darkness envelop you. For in darkness, in horror, in death, you will find the strength, the power, to become one of my immortals. Only through pain, only through fear, will you know your true selves. Those unwilling are unworthy of immortality. Do you all wish for fear tonight? Woo! Do you wish for horror? Woo! <laughs> then, my friends, you've all come to the right place. For in this place there are monsters, spirits, ghouls, and dogs. And you will see horror beyond your wildest dreams. <laughs> and if you conquer your fear, make it out to the other end. I will bestow upon you the greatest gift of all. The gift of immortality. Woo! Some of you may not survive. So do try to enjoy yourselves. There's so much to see. And I'm so happy that I get to see every single one of you writhing in pain, in fear tonight. Do dance in the darkness, my friends, and enjoy your time. And don't forget, go with the friends. You know what they say. There's such safety in numbers. <laughs> I love that you're able to stop Oddfellow and take a picture with him, and he's just really fun to interact with. Oddfellow is a great addition to this year overall. He's one of my big positives of this year. I just love that you get to interact with him a lot in this scare zone. But overall, the theming is not great. The other interactions with the characters aren't all that great. 
Dr. Oddfellow really makes it what it is, and mostly it's because he can interact with you. Speaking of Oddfellow, again, number three is going to be Jungle of Doom Expedition Horror. So in this scare zone, you are in the 1920s, and Dr. Oddfellow has ventured into the darkest jungle to do some horrific experiments on nature. So in this scare zone, you're going to be seeing a lot of monsters that have been experimented on and deformed because of Dr. Oddfellow. This scary zone is usually one of the top ones of the year. It is usually filled with fog and it is a very tight scary zone. So there really is no escaping the scares in this one. <laughs> it's okay, it can have it. <laughs> Thank you. Immortality. Again, it's things like that that I really enjoy about a scare zone. Number two is going to be Vamp 69, Summer of Blood. This is a 60s music festival located in a small town in New York. Dr. Oddfellow unleashes some vampires out onto the audience and you are their next victim. The best thing about this scare zone is that the scare actors blend in directly with the average park guests. You cannot see them coming. This is also a really big scare zone. So there's lots of room for movement. You can see vampires killing people, running around. It really is a great scare zone just to sit and watch. The New York scare zone is always one of my favorite because of size, and this one does not disappoint either. There's also some great 60s music if you're into that. And now my favorite scare zone of the year, Dark Zodiac. So one of the ways that Dr. Oddfellow became immortal is by harnessing the power of the Dark Zodiac. That's really all that you really need to know. If you want to know more, I'm sure you could Google it. It's again, it's dense. But in the Dark Zodiac, you will be facing the Zodiac signs, but they're twisted. They're dark. This scare zone got me a lot. They have people with chainsaws, but with black masks on, so they really kind of blend in once it gets dark out. And this scare zone was just a lot of fun to go through. I interacted with my Zodiac, which is a Sagittarius, and I'll put in that video here. <laughs> Sagittarius! Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> oh, no, now he's following me. The Sagittarius. <laughs> Listen, I'm a Sagittarius. <laughs> oh. I'll be honest, I never really get interactions like that before, and it was really cool to have a scare actor kind of stalking me a little bit. All right, so those are my overall thoughts on the scare zones. Let's get into the houses now. So Universal does not allow any recording of the houses at Halloween Horror Nights Orlando. They do grant some content creators access on the first day to record the houses. I will be using some of that footage in the rest of this video. Do keep in mind that I love these content creators. They're some of my favorite people to watch. So please go ahead and give them a like and subscribe. So I'm sorry to say a lot of you may be angry at me for this. Sorry, but my least favorite house this year was Stranger Things. So I am not a Stranger Things fan. I do not watch the show, but I don't think that should be required for you to enjoy a house. There are many times where I go through a house and I don't know what the IP is and I still have a great time. This house, I just felt a little bit bored. There wasn't too much happening in this house in terms of scares. I thought the set design in some locations were great, in other locations, not as great. I'm sure if you're a fan of the show, you will find something to enjoy. But for me, this was a bit of a miss. I didn't really get scared. I didn't really enjoy the set too much. I didn't really care about the story. It was not my favorite house of the year. So unfortunately, Stranger Things. Number 10. Number nine, I'm sure you're gonna be upset at me as well. The Last of Us, I'm sorry. I did not play the game, but I did watch a couple episodes of the show. I thought the house design was kind of bland. We've seen these kind of houses before. It's a mutant zombie-esque type of aesthetic going on to the house. I get it. You don't see the main characters all that much, and I didn't think the scares were really there either. We went through this house a few times, despite its very long wait. And I cannot say that the wait was worth it. 
There are a few effects in this house that I like. I like that they have spores kind of floating in the air in one room. But besides that, the design wasn't overly memorable. The scares weren't overly memorable. It was a pretty routine house. I wanted to like The Last of Us a lot more than I did, but it just really wasn't happening. Like I said, super long waits and just really not worth it, not that much fun. Number eight is Chucky Ultimate Kill Count. The issue with this house really comes from the fact that Universal promised that it would be meta, but it really isn't. So the whole story behind this house, which is not really made clear, by the way, is that there was a house that Universal made based on Chucky, and Chucky the doll was very upset because nobody was getting killed in this house. So he comes in and kills all the scare actors and then begins killing actual guests. This house also takes you through seasons one and two of the show that is on sci-fi. I do watch the show, so I could appreciate that. But the story of it being meta did not really come across. The design of the house was also really kind of boring. Um, there wasn't much to look at. The set design was kind of very static, very static kind of kills. And there just wasn't that much visually going on. The scares also weren't all that great. But for me, the biggest issue was really the story. Uh, I expected a lot more when it comes to meta type kills. And that just was not here. Number seven, Exorcist Believer. No one has seen this movie yet because it did not come out. So what you're doing is you're walking through the trailer. That is basically what this house is. You're walking through the trailer and it was fine. Um, again, kind of boring, not super memorable for me. Uh, supposedly there's a smell of feces in this house. I didn't smell that. I smelled baby powder, to be honest with you. But the house was fine. There were some decent scares, but it's kind of hard to be attached to the story when you don't know the story because the movie didn't come out yet. There are some cool effects in the house, but overall for me, cannot say that I had a great time in this house. It wasn't horrible, but it wasn't the best either. The Exorcist is what you expect. It is girls being possessed, and that's basically what you get in this house. Not too much going on besides that. Kind of the same scares over and over again. A girl popping out with scissors. I don't know why she needs scissors if she's a demon, but you know, whatever. The house is fine, but nothing really to write home about. Number six, Dr. Oddfellow, Twisted Origins. I really like what they do in the front of this house. They make it look like a circus tent when you're entering it at night. I think that's really cool. My main issue with this house was the story is very kind of hard to follow. I didn't fully know what his origin was, right? Like I know the story of Oddfellow, but this house didn't really help tell that story for me. Obviously, it's a clown house, so if you're afraid of clowns, you're going to be scared in this house. But as far as following the story, I found it to be very kind of difficult as to where I was and what was going on. There are some decent scares and some effects. My favorite is there is a knife throwing scene and they blast you with air so that you kind of feel the knives whizzing by you. That was actually quite cool. There's also a scene where there are some clowns in a dressing room and they're mannequins, but their heads move. And as you walk in, they turn towards you. So it's a pretty cool kind of jarring effect that I thought was pretty good. The house looks pretty cool. The design is pretty cool. The scares were decent for me. You really can't base a house on scares alone because your run of the house is completely different than the run of the house that somebody else had two people behind you. There's so many variables to a house being scary that you cannot use that to judge, but it is a factor. And unfortunately I wasn't super scared in Oddfellow. It was a great time, but it just wasn't super there for me. The main issue though, much like Chucky, was just the story. It was hard following it. Now we get to the halfway point. Number five is Yeti Campground Kills. This is supposed to be the comedy house this year. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if the house is super funny. There is one scene in particular where a mama Yeti grabs a kid who is killing her baby. So that was kind of fun and funny. But besides that, I don't think it's super funny. Something like Bugs, I think, was more funny last year. It's a fun house though. There are some decent scares. The HHN bear is back, which is fantastic. It was a fun house to walk through. I love the scene on the lake in particular. I thought that was a beautiful scene. It's a fun house to go through and it gets my number five spot. Number four, Universal Monsters Unmasked. Last year, Universal Monsters Legends Collide was my favorite house. I loved that house. The scares were brutal. I loved the design. I loved everything about that house. Again, number one house. 
This year, number four. There is a lot of phantom of the opera in this house. It feels like 70% of the house is phantom and everybody else kind of gets the scraps. I happen to like Invisible Man the best. He's my favorite monster that's in this house. You get very little of him where he is there. It's very effective and I love the effect that they use for him. But overall, it is a lot of Phantom of the Opera. You get one scene with the Hunchback, which is great, where he bungee jumps kind of over you. It's a great effect. However, they only do that every 20 minutes. So 20 minutes on and 20 minutes off for the actor. So it's actually very rare that you're going to actually even see that. So if you don't see the effect because he's not there, the house can be a bit of a letdown. The design of the house is great. I think the costumes are great. But just for me, a little bit too much Phantom of the Opera. I would have been happier with a more equal kind of split amongst all of them. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde is barely there. Hunchback is barely there. Invisible Man could have been there a lot more. It's a good house. It was a scary house. My second run through it was actually very good. But again, just too much Phantom. Now we're getting into the top three. Very exciting. So number three is The Darkest Deal. The Darkest Deal was actually very low on my hype list going into it. I didn't expect too much. I thought this house was fantastic. The story is that a musician is selling his soul to the devil to become better. We know that story before. It's not necessarily an original story, but the way that this house is designed, you feel like you are in the Mississippi Delta. You feel like you are in this environment. The effects in this house are fantastic. The musician getting his soul taken away at the end of the house is amazing. It has some pretty good scares, great visual appeal, and just again, the costumes, the design, everything about it. I unfortunately was only able to go through this house a small amount of times. I wish I could go ahead and do this every single night, but the weights just couldn't accommodate that. This is a really good house, and I'm happy to have it as my number three spot. Number two, Dueling Dragons, Choose Thy Fate. This was number one on my hype list. This house is a fantasy house walkthrough. There isn't too much horror elements happening here, but that just makes it so much more interesting. If you are a fan of the ride back in Islands of Adventure back in the day, you're gonna instantly pick up so many fine details of this house. I love the effects of the fire and ice being like, you know, thrown across the room. The sound effects, Everything about this house is so well done. There's some fantastic scale in this house, you know, giant towers and giant buildings and dragons. Again, this is a beautiful house and definitely worth doing for the behind the screens unmasking the horror tour so you could experience this house with the lights on. The best part about this house is it has four endings. So you can choose thy fate and choose. Do you want to go on the ice side or do you want to go on the fire side? Typically, a little bit of a spoiler, it seems that the ice side wins a little bit more than the fire side does, which is fine with me. I always preferred the ice dragon anyway. But it's cool that there is some interactivity a little bit. You can choose, do you want to follow your friends or do you want to go by yourself? You get to split up. This house also gave me some decent scares. So it's not just a fantasy house where I just enjoyed the design and environment. I was also getting scared. And finally, number one, Blood Moon Dark Offerings. I love this house. This is an incredible house. When I went through it the first time, when we left, I just couldn't stop saying, oh my God, this house. Oh my God, that house. It is a beautiful house to go through. So the story is there's basically a cult that worships the moon. And when there's a blood moon, it tells them to kill everybody who does not follow their beliefs. So you're going through this town as a non-believer. One of the main criticisms that I'm seeing online is that there aren't enough unique costumes. It all is just the same kind of villagers wearing the same kind of clothes coming out and, and attacking you. That's fine for me. I don't understand why people expect more or want more. The scares are there. This is a scary house. It is a beautiful house. The same people that made this house made last year's Dead Man's Pier. I thought Dead Man's Pier was a beautiful house, but it wasn't very scary. They definitely prioritized the design over the scares. Blood Moon is a perfect mix of the two. You have the design there and you have the scares. You can see the moon in mostly every scene. If you kind of look up and behind you, you will see the moon kind of floating above you, which is 
a fantastic effect. There are some great uses of scares here. This scene here where you're going through a town square in a village and you can look into the buildings. And as you go inside the buildings, you can look out back into the town square. There's even a scare actor that pops out, not to scare you, but just to kind of make it seem like this is a, a live village. This to me is universal at their finest. It is scary. It is beautiful. It tells a great story. And I loved this house. Number one, Blood Moon. Fantastic. So that's everything for this year's Halloween Horror Nights. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know your rankings of the houses if you were able to go this year. Leave them in the comments. I would love to debate. Everybody's list is going to be different this year. That's the best thing about Halloween Horror Nights. This event also transforms throughout the whole season. So don't be surprised if a house like, I don't know, Stranger Things becomes much better in the next couple of weeks. Universal is always tweaking things, making things better. This makes going to the event that much more interesting. I can't go to the event anymore. I don't live in Florida, so my ranking is staying as it is. But either way, like I said, please let me know what you think about this year's houses and scare zones in the comments. Once again, please like and subscribe. It would mean a lot to me. Thank you, and I will see you again next time. Happy Halloween Horror Nights.